Hi everybody, it's Renee with the Moran Experience. Well, we have been experiencing quite a bit lately. Um, as you can see from our stories, Kelly had a heart attack. He's doing pretty good. Um, he's currently at cardiac rehab. And because of his heart attack and his newfound diabetic status, we have been changing quite a few things around here. We went back to a more ketogenic diet and just lower carbs kind of in general. And um, today I'm going to try to make some lupin flour pasta. We don't want to eat traditional pasta. It's too high in carbs. It spikes his blood sugar and I don't want it either. So we're going to try this. I found one online and let's give it a shot. These are the ingredients I'm going to use. This is lupin flour. It's a really low carb flour, one net carb, high protein. It's made from legumes, so think peanuts, but it's not peanuts. It's a lupin bean. You do have to keep this cold. I have mine in the freezer. Um, and it so far has been um, really wonderful to use. It's kind of yellow. And then because of Kelly's um, cardiac diet, we're going to use some no salt. I think I might add some salt also, but uh, and then we're just going to use eggs. We're going to mix up the dough, um, and then we're going to run it through this new attachment I got for my KitchenAid. It, I just put it on the uh, pasta thing here, so um, hopefully we can make some pasta. We'll see. We'll see how it works out, but I thought I would show everybody. Okay, our recipe says one cup of lupin flour. And yeah, I'm using a recipe, but I don't know. We'll see how it works. So I just have three quarters of a cup here because I don't know where my actual measuring cups are. Like, I don't know. My kids wander off this stuff. So I'm going to guess it's about a cup. It's like super soft and then traditionally when you make pasta you make a well I'm going to kind of make this just traditional and I have jumbo eggs so I am going to the recipe says two eggs for a cup of sugar cup of sugar cup of flour but these are really giant eggs so I am going to crack an egg in the well Ooh, and it's a double yolk. So I'm going to say it is two eggs. And then it tells me how much salt. I'm going to use no salt um, just to keep it low sodium. And then we're going to get messy. So first I am going to um, just start on the edge and just kind of work it in. I know a lot of people will use a fork for this. I just don't feel like walking across my kitchen to get one. So I'm going to try this like this. And in all of this mess with him having a heart attack and all this stuff, I have no idea where my tripod is. So you guys are on a teeny tiny tripod and I hope it's going to work. But we got to get, we got to get some more content out there, man. We want to grow our channel. We want to take you along for our ride, especially now. It's going to get interesting. Low carb, no carb, cardiac diet, trying to, I don't know, keep our special needs kids happy. It's life has got us right now. So I appreciate you coming along for the ride. I'm just gonna. Now lupin flour acts very similar to regular flour. Um, but I'm not sure how this is going to be pasta wise. I know it needs to sit after it gets kind of all incorporated and um, it'll pick up the moisture from the egg. But like I said, we're using a jumbo egg and a whole cup. I might have to add another egg. 
We'll see. Seems pretty good. Like it seems dry. I knew it was supposed to be dry. I'm gonna let it sit here. I'll clean up the counter a little bit and then we will get it run through the pasta attachment and see how this does. If it's gonna be this easy, this is what we're doing for pasta from here on out. So this is my new, well, first of all, this is my new kitchen aid, but this is my new attachment here. I wanted to be able to make pasta at home um, well just in general I want to be able to make pasta at home but now I really want to be able to make pasta that is low carb that isn't so expensive going from a one income household to a no income household um, money is exceptionally tight so if this can save us just a little bit of money um, I'm super hopeful now, here's what my dough looks like. It's been sitting here for a little bit while I cleaned up my mess. And it is kind of mm, tucked. Well, I mean, it, it's holding together well. Uh, it seems a little stiff and kind of sticky almost. I mean, it's not sticking to me, but it feels kind of sticky. So um, the first step is going to be to run it through this this one right here to do this side this side cuts like the noodles but it, the first step is going to be to run it through here a few times to see if we can kind of knead the dough together and since I don't know where my tripod is I'm gonna have to find something to stack you guys on so you can see what I'm doing okay well I think I think this is gonna be a good I don't know if it's gonna work but you're in a you're in a flower vase. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try to run this through. Will you be able to see me? Oh, yeah. Okay, ready? I'm going to turn this on. And... I think it's working. I don't know. We're going to try this together. So, this is half of my dough. I don't know if it'll even go in here. That doesn't seem to be working very well. Maybe the dough is still too stiff. Maybe. Mm, I need smaller pieces. It does seem really stiff. Let's try. Oh, 
the lady that I got the idea from said, just keep trying that it'll come together. So, we'll see if it comes together without me destroying my fingers. Oh no, what am I doing wrong? I don't want to get my fingers in there. Okay, so my thought is <laughs> I probably need to go get my rolling pin and roll this out a little bit before I shove it in there. So bear with me, one second. Here it is, my rolling pin. Well, it was Kelly's mom's rolling pin. Whack this. Okay, that seems pretty good. See how thin that is? I wonder. Let's try this way. What? I might have figured it out. Yeah. Oh, and it does seem to be holding together really nicely, actually. It definitely seems more like a pasta dough at this stage, so I'm going to keep running it through here just a little bit. I don't want it to be more rectangle when it comes through, because right now it's uh, not a recognizable shape. So let's try again. Oh wow. I mean, I would guess there's a learning curve. Come on, pasta. Look at it. I think we're doing it. Okay. Maybe it needs a little more moisture. Kind of seems really dry. But comparatively, this is what I've been running through, and this is what hasn't been run through. It looks way different. So I should probably run all the dough through here. Just like I was. Smush it down. Ah. Even that, even this, this is the one I was running through and this is the one I just ran through. See how it's not quite together yet? kind of cool. We tried those miracle noodles or konjac noodles. I can't do it. But I can't ask Kelly to eat a specific way if I'm not willing to do it. So we're all in here. It starts to come together pretty good actually after it's been through a few times. Oh, I forgot to smush it. Okay, so so far I've learned that you kind of got to flatten everything to go through. And that it takes a few times for the dough, this dough to come together. Wow, it's already making a difference. 
Look at that. Okay, so that part's done. I hope it makes a bunch of noodles because this is a lot of work. But it won't. It won't make a bunch of noodles. It'll make a cup's worth of noodles. <laughs> I think it's going to need more moisture for the first time. I mean, this is the first time I'm using this flour to do this. And when, when I made pasta before, I always just hand rolled it with my rolling pin. I never, ever had a pasta maker. So I think... We might need a little bit of moisture. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, I think. I don't really want to add any more moisture. And my pasta will hold together well. Okay, so um, it's a little stiff still, so I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of water and then run this half of the dough through again and see if we can get just a little more like subtle supple dough and see if that'll help um, i've never used the whip and flour before to make um, pasta so this is the first time for everything i'm glad you're helping me right, so i got this little bit of water here um just gonna put a little bit and see if that's gonna make a difference It does seem to be making a little bit of a difference, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. Yeah, it does seem to be holding together pretty good. See that? Oh, that seems way nicer. Just a little bit of more moisture. So I guess I probably, if I had smaller eggs and I put two of them in there, I probably would have had enough moisture.
<laughs> That's like real legit pasta. Fabulous. So here it is, my pile of pasta from one cup of lupin flour, one egg, a little bit of water, and some no salt. Like, that's pretty significant. We'll see how it cooks up. I'll show you a clip of that later. But there we are for now. So this is all of the noodles after I'm done. I, I cut them kind of thin. Uh, this is the first time I'm making this. So I'm going to let them just dry out here. Had I cut them thicker, I would have put them up on my pasta drying rack, but I think they'll be okay. So we'll see how they cook up. Okay, now that these noodles have set out and dried for a little while, I'm going to go ahead uh, and cook a few. It said to just put it in um, a little bit of water. I'm kind of worried they're going to disintegrate. So we're going to check it out together. So I just have them in this bowl. And some pot of boiling water. Oh, please don't come apart. Okay, they've been in here for about two to three minutes and they are a different shade than the dry ones. I'm going to get them out of here and in a colander and then I'll have Kelly try. Okay, these are lupin flour noodles. In the orange bowl are the not cooked ones, but right here I have some cooked ones. Okay. Do you want to try one and just tell me what you think about the texture, the flavor, the anything? Yeah. You shouldn't be too hot to touch. They're, they're good. They taste great. Different texture than a regular noodle, though. Is it? Yeah. Do you think it'll be passable as a noodle, or are you going to miss noodles? I don't think I'll miss noodles. These, uh, they're just a little more... They kind of... They're a little more grainy than a regular pasta noodle. Yeah. But the texture is good. Okay, awesome. I'm going to put them in some, like, creamy mushroom soup sauce. They'll definitely take on whatever flavor you give them. Okay, well we'll try it out. Anyway, do you think it's a win? Two thumbs up from Kelly. <laughs> so here's dinner. These are pork steaks, some green beans, and then those noodles. So let's plate up and see what it looks like. Um, I will say I think the noodles are a little more tender than I anticipated. So they're like kind of broke up in smaller pieces. It's fine. Everything's fine. So let's see. Let's put some of this on here. And it's just a sauce of what I cooked to the pork chops in, which is some homemade cream of mushroom soup, a little bit of heavy cream, some butter, and some Parmesan cheese. So they are tender, you see that they are like, kind of small pieces, but I think they're going to be sufficient for noodles. I think if I cut them thicker and wider, um, they'd probably hold up a little better. But we'll see how dinner goes and see if we make them again. Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Yeah, that too, but also the Moran experience. I'll try this again.